Did you know, for example, Britain consumes over 400 polo mints every second, but Britain's mum still knows Britain's been smoking. <laughs> 5% of Britain's toddlers are obese, and they're known as waddlers. <laughs> Almost half of all men lie to their partners about their looks to keep them happy. I do. I tell her, I'm dead good-looking. I don't know what's the matter with your eyes. <laughs> right, let's get started. Talking about that's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our palace job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. <laughs> right, Jason, your team, what else have the uh, nation been talking about this week? Yeah. Come on, well, come on, Jason. Come on, Jason, have a guess. Speak for it. <laughs> Do you know what this is? This is when double acts haven't got their mates. That's yeah. what this is. <laughs> That the prisons are full. Oh. Have you not heard this? Controversial. It is a bit controversial, a little bit of news. So the story is that they're going to release a lot of um, prisoners now because they're full. <laughs> early. 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 They're going to release them early. They're releasing 25,000, aren't they? I assume not all at once, but the start of the marathon. <laughs> <laughs> it's all come steaming out of the prison. All straight to a bus stop. <laughs> Some of them dressed as rhinos, hopefully, just for the comic. <laughs> they have said it's only going to be like for like petty crimes, like burglary and drug dealing, which I, you know I think is a good thing because the car boot sale near me is boring at the moment. <laughs> really what my biggest fear is going to prison, being locked way. up with four burly tattooed men. Your worst fear, or most of your video collection. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking about it. <laughs> okay, let's have a look I and see whether prisons is I'm up there. Yes, this is the story that prisoners are to be released early because of overcrowding. To stay in police cells, it costs £1,800 per prisoner per night. That seems like a lot of money, but it includes dinner, breakfast and tickets to a West End show. <laughs> One more thing to get. Fingers on buzzers. What else have the nation been talking about this week? The Glastonbury Festival, which is happening this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that right? Have you been talking about it? Are you going to go, David? No, I'm not, because I've already had sex in a tent when I was in the Sea Scouts. Right. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going on. I think I am the only person here who went to the original Glastonbury. In 1823. <laughs> <laughs> and if you vote for it, we can rebuild it. <laughs> when was that? Tell it us was in 1971. I was born in 1971. Were you? Your mother didn't go to a tent in... Oh, no, never mind. Uh, <laughs> I went there last year, it's horrible. They had big beef burger things on... Uh, they were cooking about a thousand beef burgers <laughs> on steel drums. That's what it stinks of hamburgers there. It's full of idiots. I, I hate the... You'd have loved it, I'd have thought. It's very muddy. You'd be like, big in <laughs> surrounded by idiots. It was horrible, I didn't like Homecoming. any of it. Uh, They'd have lifted you up as one of them. <laughs> Carried you around, he's our leader. <laughs> Let's see if Glastonbury is up there. I'm looking for the top word or phrase the public said when we said dance. Oh, it's pain, isn't it? <laughs> Unnecessary pain. Oh, Sean. Is... Are you a dad, Sean? Yes, I am, yeah. You don't sound very happy about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, um... Are you on the birth certificate? Yeah, of course <laughs> <laughs> You know the people Trisha normally meets, don't you? <laughs> You've asked that question before, haven't you? <laughs> Are you a dad, Alan? Uh, no, I'm going to be, though. Just as soon as you meet the right woman. <laughs> They don't call me Shaggy for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so this is baby number one? Yeah. You're going to get a better name than that, though, surely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just thinking, cos from now on it's no sex, no time together, no attention... Are you offering him a little bit on the side? From now on you won't be getting any at home. <laughs> <laughs> She won't even know you're gone. <laughs> Jeez! <laughs> it's a nice offer, but I think I'm out of your league. <laughs> Top word of phrase associated with dads. Hard working or...? Hard working? You're having a laugh. Almost as exactly Lazy. Right. Lazy is exactly Lazy, right, yeah. Yes. Yes, the word most associated with dads is lazy. A spokesman for Lazy Dad said, Oh, in a minute. <laughs> Jason, your team? 
What do you want to go for? We're going to go with the uh, the dart player. We're, We're going to go for Andy Forden, the dart player. This is a nation's favourite question. What does the British public prefer, darts or Shakespeare? Do you think he's holding that during a game? Yeah, that'd be quite dangerous. <laughs> Makes darts a lot more exciting. Imagine if it hit one of his arms, he'd just burst. <laughs> <laughs> And sometimes when Andy Fordham lifts his arm like that, it's so big and greasy, it does look like a kebab shop window. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, these are great athletes you're talking about here. Yeah. Great yeah. athlete? Well, that's, that's a British tennis player saying that, so... <laughs> <laughs> I think Shakespeare um, is sh So, uh, oh. I don't mind a couple of the, you know, the Romeo and Juliet type things, not bad, but he's rubbish at comedy, isn't he? He's not funny. Well, he was back then. Was he yet? They all went, yeah, all right, Willie. Very funny, that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well but done. do you think in 200 years people will find you funny? I don't think that many people find us funny now. <laughs> <laughs> when I was at uh, university, we spent six weeks... Did you go to university? I did go to university, what yeah. What did you study? I studied... Uh, Northern me... studies. Northern <laughs> studies, yeah. <laughs> Media and performance, I did. It's, Wheel uh, tapping. Salford. <laughs> 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 Which university was it? It was Salford University. Did it used to be a polytechnic or it's, a garage? It's... <laughs> <laughs> I did a bit of drama there and uh, we studied Shakespeare. And it was hard in, in that sort of area of Manchester. It's quite rough, you know, and there was a lot of, like, is this a dagger I see before me? Yeah, give me your trainers. You know, it was hard <laughs> to get through. I can't imagine you acting, though. You can't imagine me what? I can't imagine you acting. Oh, God, the God. <laughs> <laughs> What do the nation prefer, Shakespeare or dance? I think people prefer Shakespeare. OK. I think darts. I can tell you darts won. 51% oh, of the population prefers darts. <laughs> Is that a dagger I see before me? No, it's a dart. <laughs> Sean, Gok, Frankie, what have the nation been talking about? Well, I think it has to be the transition of power where Tony Blair has stepped down as Prime Minister and Gordon Brown has quickly gone into his shoes. I personally have done very well incredibly well out of Tony Blair's time, because I had the wisdom, about ten years ago, to place a bet at Labrooks that his last meeting will be with Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> who would also be the governor of California. <laughs> <laughs> I watched the press conference with Brown on Wednesday, and he says, I'm going to make some changes at number ten. And uh, I presume he means policy-wise, but I thought he should just make some changes to number ten, like getting rid of that door. It's been there years. Maybe change it into saloon style. <laughs> <laughs> Or some, some of those beads that they have to separate a news agent from his house. <laughs> you know, <they'll> just... <laughs> he should stone clad it. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to see him slide down on a pole. <laughs> I always think Brown looks like he's just taken the head off a bear costume like that. <laughs> <laughs> he's only got one eye. Well, only one of them works. If you're going to start making people in charge who've only got one eye, why not go with the legend that is Columbo? <laughs> How good would he be in Prime Minister's Question Time? <laughs> Just one more thing, I... Uh, <laughs> Mr Cameron, my wife's a great fan of yours. <laughs> I thought it was so wrong of, of Tony Blair to, uh, to go out and say all his problems are based on his big mouth. I mean, you don't call your wife that in public. <laughs> He's been called uh, Bushy's Poodle. I know that when they, they do play Frisbee together. But, um... <laughs> Bush said, uh, uh, I've heard he's been called my poodle, but he's bigger than that. <laughs> <laughs> what, he's like a labradoodle? <laughs> got, you've got Gordon Brown, you've got Tony Blair. Who looks better naked? Both mingers. <laughs> Both mingers? <laughs> but I would do Tony Blair. <laughs> Tony, I know you've got your afternoons off now. <laughs> I met him on a job once. Uh, you met on him on a, a job? <laughs> <laughs> what did you say, Gok? Yes, Are you Tony Blair? <laughs> I literally spun around and he was standing there and it was like everything went really slow and there was this big light behind him. He is sexy. He is so... Look, everyone's like that. Oh, well. <laughs> well, let's have a look and see if Brown and Blair are the most talked about thing this week. <laughs> Not the most talked about, but it came in second. Tony Blair handed over power to Gordon Brown. He said, give this to David Cameron, would you? <laughs> On Wednesday, Tony Blair finally went. At 12.30, he appeared at Prime Minister's Questions. At 1.30, he drove to his new home in Connaught Square. Then at 2.30, diagnosis murder, and 4.15, deal or no deal. <laughs> Jason, Joan, Alexa, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Oh, uh, Spice Girls. I'm thrilled because it's the first time they've been together in years. Victoria, apparently, as she's called now. I love it when a gets money. Oh, Victoria... <laughs> <laughs>
posh came over to our country, and she thought she was going to be so terrific, and then she found out in Beverly Hills she's fat, so she came home. <laughs> What's her name, uh, the one that just had the Eddie Murphy baby? Scary. Scary, yes. Yeah. And now that she's nursing, I said they should call her Dairy Spice. <laughs> it turns out it was Eddie Murphy's kid. Well, it came out in a fat suit. <laughs> Did you hear this? They've got this machine. This digitally enhances their voices. And I'd really like to be in charge of that machine. Especially when Posh By steps up to the mic, just press off. <laughs> she's going, oh! oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> um, um, let's have a look and see if the Spice Girls is there. 13% of viewers would like to see Big Brother impose a ban on what? Cameras. <laughs> they're just all in there, they think they're being filmed and they're not. <laughs> <laughs> and every time they, there's a camera and they look at it, you just squirt some water at it like a camera. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's very unfair, the twins, because most people are on their own, aren't they? And they've got an instant yes. sort of familiar face. Well, the same face. <laughs> <laughs> it seems slightly unfair, that, 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 that they've got that support there. Because so you're obviously all a bit mad, aren't you, from, from being in there? Some of them were mad before they went in, I'll tell you. Yeah. Some of no. them were. No. <laughs> With no. me? No, oh, no, were. I was normal. <laughs> I did get hit on the head of a frying pan before I went in there. Was it a random attack on a moped? <laughs> or, uh... No, it was a professional hit, straight on the head. A the professional hit. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm good at this, aren't I? Yeah. Can I just, <laughs> can I just on behalf of everyone, I don't know who hit you with a pan, but just thank you. <laughs> I'll give you a, a clue. Uh, Shabnam is covered in it. Makeup. Correct. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yes, 13% of viewers would like to impose a ban on makeup in the house. Shabnam wears a lot of makeup. What she doesn't realise is it's what's inside that counts. Her <laughs> dreadful personality. <laughs> Jason Daniel Charlie, 31% of Brits say that Jerry reminds them of what? A kind of Tesco value George Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Is the right answer. I'm That's a normal guy. Yes, 31% of Brits say that Jerry reminds them of George Michael. That's fair enough, he's Greek, you're in a park, it's dark. <laughs> There is, of course, currently a state of emergency in Greece. They're worried Jerry will go back. <laughs> OK, 20% uh, of Brits think Charlie should what? Only communicate by post. <laughs> <laughs> Tell more Kieran Richardson stories. <laughs> There's not enough of them. Yeah, I agree, baby. I want to know more about the Manchester United number 33. <laughs> <laughs> is he single? Me. Oh, actually, I'm going on a date. Sorry, I forgot. Oh, all right, damn. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you going on a date with? I'm not telling you I'm going on a date. It's a secret. Right. You'll probably read about it, like, in two days in the paper, cos when I... I go to a restaurant and, like, they're there and stuff like that, and I'm... <laughs> oh, no, well, you, you may laugh. You may laugh, but the other day, she got a free Big Mac. <laughs> when? Huh? How did you know I was in McDonald's the other day, anyway? <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> it's amazing. Just a wild stab in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so I'll give you a clue. Should. It's to do with the amount that she speaks. Stitch her lips together. She should stop being funny. She'll get her own show. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is 20% of Brits think Charlie should have her own talk show. <laughs> no! Hey! <laughs> hey, think about it. It could be a game show where you get a prize if you get a word in edgeways. <laughs> In a poll to find the historical figure Brits would most like to bring back to life, Elizabeth I came second. Who do you think came top? When you say bring back, do you mean, like, reanimate them? From, like, they dig them up and then get loads of scientists to sort of make some kind of animatronic version of them? <laughs> yeah, no, this is a question about corpse robbing. Yes. <laughs> That's, that makes it a lot more interesting, then. I think, no, it's bringing them back to life as they were in their prime, let's Why? say. Okay. More interestingly... How? These well, two I've got it here. I'm gonna, when I reveal the answer, I will tell you how to bring back but your dead what? relatives that you miss so terribly <laughs> back to life. All right, so stay f***ing tuned. <laughs> From the magic. Is the historical figure supposed to take back their old job or are they given a kind of ceremonial role? That's too many questions. <laughs> no, but you see what he means. Yes. He needs a reason for it, because if, if they said, no, well, for science, <laughs> you might say Marie yeah, Curie. No, all right, it is for, purely for a laugh. For fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's in Tintin. 
<laughs> He's a famous artist. Rolf Harris. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He's not dead. <laughs> He's not dead. Well, let's kill him and bring him back. Da Vinci. Da Vinci, is it? Yes. Good yes. <laughs> work. Yes, the historical good. figure Brits would most like to bring back to life is Leonardo da Vinci. If I could bring anyone back from the dead, I'd bring back Harry Potter. <laughs> Sorry, that spoilt it. <laughs> Jason, Susie and Alan, what do you want to go for? Bond. Let's go with Bond. All right, you've chosen Roger Moore. This is an audience poll question. It was announced this week that uh, a new James Bond novel is to be published. We polled the studio audience and asked them, who would you call in an emergency, James Bond or Andy McNabb? The famous <laughs> SAS nutter. <laughs> if you start ringing fictional characters when you're in the sh you are even further in the <laughs> Oh, my God, it's all right. Harry Potter will come. It'll be fine. All right? <laughs> I, I say Bond any day. I mean, Bond, he's, he's James Bond. Alan, you were in Goldeneye, weren't you? Yeah, I was in Goldeneye. I was in a James Bond film. So you could technically ring him. I have his number. Let's ring him now for a laugh. I'm in trouble. I c I've not got Andy McNabb's number, so I had to ring you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, the fact that there's been several Bonds I mean, there's a, there's there's a, a chance of, of any one of them showing yeah. up. Yeah, you don't it want one of the old ones. I'll help you, fuck off, ladies and gentlemen. The last thing you need in an emergency is a bleed actor. How oh, dare yeah. you? Leave it, guys, yeah. leave it. Yeah. Just come yeah. up and go. So what's the problem here? <laughs> well, that was that was sort of an impression of Roger Moore, who's not technically an actor. <laughs> <laughs> James Bond or Andy McNabb, yeah, who would they call in an emergency? Bond. 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 You think James Bond? Bond. Right, 68% of the audience yes. would call James Bond in an emergency. <laughs> of course, James Bond has a pen that turns into a gun. Andy McNabb has a pen that turns into a terrible book. <laughs> <laughs> Most desirable location for a holiday home. Well, I know Alistair Campbell's using his diary money to build a villa up his own arse. <laughs> <laughs> I know this. I know this. Germany. What? Germany. Everyone wants to live in Germany. It's beautiful. It's got the beaches, it's got the weather. The beaches, the weather. Yeah, it's got one beach, just outside Hamburg. It's not but... really a beach, it's more of a sort of port. Sort of... <laughs> <laughs> if you get down off one of the dock things, there's a bit of shingle. You, okay. <laughs> you should be a travel agent. Yeah. <laughs> Is it uh, Disneyland? Cos, like, you can live with all the characters and stuff, like, next door. Be... Kind of a holiday. Morning, home. Mickey! Morning! Uh, just be great. <laughs> where would you like to? Any place where my mother wouldn't visit. So, here. <laughs> Will she not visit here? Uh, she doesn't travel. You should... Well, you can go anywhere then, can't yes, you? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I think New Zealand. New Zealand, you're very close. New Zealand was second. Australia. Australia, Australia is it, yeah. <laughs> yes, Australia is a great place to buy a holiday home. You can go there for the weekend, spend six minutes in the airport cafe, <laughs> then fly back refreshed and ready for Wednesday. <laughs> Jason, David, Alex, what have teenagers been talking about? I imagine uh, exam results. Exam results. Exam. Are exams getting easier for these young people? This is an issue. In geography tests now, you're allowed to take in a sat nav. <laughs> <laughs> they, need to modern, they need to modernise stuff. That's a problem. Like, look at maths. I do maths. It's always like Sally's got three apples in a basket and all that. You know, they need to make it so it speaks to kids. You know what I mean? So it's like uh, John O's got ten pound worth of credit left. He needs to download fifteen ringtones <laughs> at eighty p each, but he needs to save forty p to one belly's. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Our maths book at school was Scottish maths and practice. They never seemed very Scottish. There was no, if I stab two gadgets, <laughs> it would not take the f to bleed to death. <laughs> Jimmy, can I say we've got a teenager with us tonight? Mm. Thank you. Well, I moisturise. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you've just, have you just done your exams? I did, and I, and I failed tragically, I think. So have you just done them and now you're waiting for the results? Yeah, I am. It's sort of like being in sort of a horrible purgatorial state. It's like Guantanamo Bay, I imagine. It really is. <laughs> Do you think if you fail, you'll be like working in Asda? Just something like that? Um, I think <laughs> I would be in Summerfield, really? which is my favourite of the um, chains, actually. Well, have you been to Lidl? <laughs> Lidl is a bargain. L never been to Lidl. Never actually even heard of Lidl. It's Eastern European. Is it? Yeah. Oh. Nobody knows quite who runs it or where they get the stuff from. <laughs> But it's cheap. <laughs> so what do you think you're going to get? Um, judging by last year, I got a U in politics. That means unmarkable. Probably unmarkable? Literally wow. unmarkable. Did you do it in crayon? <laughs> <laughs> when I was at school, all the boys used to go and uh, snog and grope Julie Miller in the art closet. 
And, um, you know, they don't make teachers like Mrs Miller anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they had strange qualifications in my day. They had this mm -hmm. one called a CSE, which basically meant... It's like having a sticker saying, I've done some math. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, Jimmy, British teenagers do do very well in pregnancy tests. <laughs> you, you know a lot about that, David, wouldn't you? There is this... Oh, you b <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's see if teenagers have been talking about exam worries. Yes, teenagers are talking about their exam results. Of course, these days, it's getting more and more easier to do a pass in English. And ting. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, Peaches, Chris. What else have teenagers been talking about? Is... Sure, Peaches and Chris. That sounds great, like we're in a, we're like a sort of teen band. Tell you what, if you were in a teen band, you were definitely the musically talented one, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Big Brother. My favourites are Sam and Amanda, the twins. The second one that went in went, you've never seen anything like me before. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from your identical twin, <laughs> who just went in. <laughs> Would you, though? Would I? Mm. I don't like the idea of disappointing two women at the same time. <laughs> Carol? Carol? Carol works as a, as a I think, some sort of, um... Gargoyle. <laughs> <laughs> what, I find, what I do find is it's great when you get all those characters together, isn't it? You know, it's just a house full of... You know when people say, like, you've got to meet my mate, he's the right character, and they've just got <laughs> loads of them in the house. It's like there's this sort of national dyslexia where the word character has replaced the word... <laughs> 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 and now they go, you know my mate, he's the right character... Well, he's an... <laughs> you know, Tracy, she entered the house looking like Bagpuss, and gradually her hair is a normal colour, hair's come out. It's gone a little bit white and a little bit crazy. She's, uh, every time she opens her mouth now, I just want her to go, Marty, where we're going, we don't need roads. <laughs> <laughs> I think Charlie's amazing. You can't beat these outfits, South London. <laughs> They're going to make a, a Charlie talking doll, but there isn't enough string in the world to hurt <laughs> actually <laughs> Oh, God! <laughs> It was more entertaining, it was just women in the house and that one bloke. Because he was yeah. in hell, wasn't he? They were like the harpies in Jason the Argonauts, those things that fly down. <laughs> and the man's there and he's blind and they've got food. And he yeah. like... <laughs> yeah. Jason, I think Alex has got a puncture. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's have a look and see whether teenagers are talking about Big Brother. <laughs> yes, they are. Yes, it would appear teenagers are loving the Big Brother. You know when they swear on Big Brother in the house and they play the sound of bird song? I've got so used to that that when Spring Watch is on, I think the Badgers are calling Bill Oddie a... <laughs> 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 <laughs>